This was all masterfully planned and executed. During the Civil War, the Constitutional Republic abandoned Congress, which forced President Lincoln to issue martial law. At this time, the Republic was taken over by foreign insurgents who replaced it with the United States of America, Inc., in all caps, in 1871. A corporation that had the same name, the United States, what better way to replace it without anyone noticing that they just got turned into a business and commercialized? Now, this corporation was later purchased by the banking powers behind the Fed in 1912. The Fed was created in 1913. Why did this happen? Well, the US was bankrupt when we sold the United States to foreign banking cartels, if you will. Salvage liens were placed on every asset. Check this out. Including the people of the new federalized states. Now let's fast forward to 1933. An income tax was placed on the people to pay these foreign bankers who own the IMF, which owns the IRS. Look into what the IRS actually is. Who is the IMF owned by? You gotta follow the money. Who funds it? It's the same people that own the United States Inc. Same few families, and they're not American. So when I say foreign insurgents, that's what I mean. So 1933, USA Inc. goes bankrupt. An income tax is placed on its people. In other words, you and I were turned into property. Look it up. We were turned into cattle and we were collateralized in order to turn us, humans, flesh and blood, into a means of paying off a massive debt. But the problem is, is that while you are technically a person, you've entered into contracts that you're completely unaware of, such as your birth certificate, social security number, etc., that are all saying, I consent to being collateralized. You're living as property, as opposed to living as a blood and flesh natural being. On paper, you are property. You are a corporation right now. You might be hearing this and thinking, we're fucked. We're property? Are you kidding me? And that's true. And property doesn't have rights. But here is both the blessing and the curse. There are multiple of you. Just like there's multiple United States of Americas, sleight of hand, remember? What hat do they want to wear? There are multiple of you. The insane irony in all of this is the fact that they are actually now liable for all of your alleged obligations, aka debts. That's what a debt means. You can play a wrong move in chess and still win the game. And commerce is chess. Their greatest attempt to set us back actually is their greatest weakness. How can we owe debt if the United States is liable for all of its property. If we're its property, then it's the United States burden to pay our debt. And that is exactly what the law says. I'm gonna leave you guys with two different codes that I highly recommend you look into. First is gonna be the House Joint Resolution Act 192. And when that occurred, the dollar was turned into what is called Federal Reserve debt notes. So if we're being asked to pay debts, but all we are given from the system is debt notes, AKA fiat money, to pay back those debts, how can we pay a debt with a debt? I just want you to sit with that. They never gave you lawful money. They never gave you gold. They never gave you silver. The other side of it is looking into 18 USC 8. 18 United States Code 8. You're gonna come to find out that that's literally telling you that the United States is liable for all debt. All of your debt, the United States is liable for it. How can you pay a debt with debt notes? <laughs> Don't let that go over your head. They already got paid. Whoever's coming after you, saying you owe a debt, whatever, they already got paid. Why would you be paying it twice? Common law, a completely different, higher level set of law that comes from God, the creator, is for a natural blood and flesh man. And yet you have been following legal law your entire life.